It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Olin Sailors. Olin is a lifelong resident of Anderson and a graduate of Boys High. He was co-captain of the Boys High School baseball team. When he was nine years old, he became the most valuable player. He played 12 and under baseball and got to go to New York to see Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams. When he signed with the Milwaukee Braves, he was too young to sign a pro contract, so his daddy had to sign for him. He was offered multiple college scholarships in baseball. He coached American Legion ball in Anderson and won the state championship. And he was one game away from getting to go to the National Youth Baseball Championship. Jim Ed Rice invited Olin to go with him when he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. However, Olin didn't go because he needed to keep his business going. Olin owned and ran Sailor's One Stop on Highway 28 Bypass in Anderson for approximately 40 years. Please help me welcome our local slugger, Mr. Olin uh, Sailor's. I played when I was 14 and 15, and I feel fortunate that I got to play with some of the guys that were on their way out, some of the way guys that would tell me how good other people were. We're talking about people like Ed Hamler, you know, these, these people came down and they just tell me what it used to be like to play. My dad played in the county league. My wife's dad played textile ball. But it was such a pleasure to see these people, what they had done through these mills. The way all this stuff happened, the north migrated to the south, and with them they brought cotton mills. The next thing they brought with them is baseball. So it became so popular, if you look around Anderson, every mill had a ballpark. And every mill had their own fans. And when you went to the other mill ballpark, believe me, you were, you were not welcome. I can assure you of that. And then they started to recruit college kids. But one of the best statements I've ever heard, and it's in this book, a gentleman in Anderson said, if those kids can't make the major leagues, there's no point in coming to Anderson because they can't play here either. <laughs> That's how good it was, and it really, really was. My mom worked at Ore Mill, so I was eligible to play there. My dad worked at a company you probably don't recognize the name of, Poinsett Lumber and Manufacturing Company, which became Singer, which is now Ryobi. So I got to play for two teams. And that book that I've got right here, it got me playing two teams in the same league. I don't know if I played under a different name or how I did that, but it's in the book. But I'm just glad to get an opportunity to come over here and tell all you people, and thank God some of you know the story, how good baseball used to be and how much these mills meant to it. So when I, you clocked out, 12 o'clock or whatever, you've got to go to a ballpark. And let me mention a couple of names to you. Champ Osteen, he was the first player to really dignify mill ball or textile league baseball. And there was another young man that came along by the name of Shearless Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson became the best player on the Brandon Mill team at the age of 13. All this sounds real good until you know the whole story. He had a pair of spikes that were too tight for him, and if you ever play ball, you can't play with that. And the manager would not take him out because he was so good, so he just took his shoes off. He wound up with the 1919 Chicago White Sox. Judas Joe could not read and write. These people were signing in a position that they would not play well and give the ball play of the world series to the other team. Judas Joe didn't know where he was signing, didn't have any idea. During that World Series, he hit 373, threw five men out on the bases, hit the only home run of the series. Now, the ones of you guys or the ladies in here that know baseball, you can't throw a World Series when you throw statistics like that. He didn't know how not to play hard. 
and to this day he's still being punished for it. Over at Brandon Mill in Greenville, they have opened up a park that she was Joe Jackson, and that's very well deserved. On a trip I won in 19. 48, I was nine years old and won the MVP on a 12 and under team. And uh, my family was of so called resources. So that won a trip to New York to the local uh, recreation department. And we sitting in right field. I'm nine years old. I look out and there's Joe DiMaggio playing center field for the Yankees. Then the Boston Red Sox come out. And there's Dom DiMaggio, his brother, playing center field for Boston. But over to his right is some guy named Ted Williams. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I can never, I can just about sit here right now and imagine that I'm sitting in Yankee Stadium with 69,000 people. And there's Joe DiMaggio, and there's Ted Williams, and there's Phil Rizzuto. I, I can relive that story as many times as you people want to sit here tonight and ask me about it. Who's a better player, Joe or Ted? Why don't you ask me which girl is prettier? <laughs> if you're good enough, you don't have to cheat. Mickey Mantle didn't have to cheat. Joe DiMaggio didn't have to cheat. Ted Williams didn't have to cheat. And these guys that use those steroids and all that stuff, if they ever put them in the Hall of Fame, I'll be embarrassed. Baseball is meant to be pure. If you're good enough to play, you don't need that stuff. Barry Bonds is good enough not to do that. But I'm glad to see these sports writers not vote them in the Hall of Fame. I didn't read this book once. I read it twice. Just to be sure I read the names right and the names on the back of the book. Earl Wooten, Russ Lyons from Calhoun Falls. Everybody had a star. Marion Middleton from uh, Williamson. Frank Howard from Clemson. You ready? I can't imagine Frank Howard in a baseball uniform. Olin D. Johnson, that became governor of the state of South Carolina, played textile league baseball down from uh, Honeypath. I mean, it's just amazing to read this stuff. I've had a full life of sports, regret some, but I don't regret a whole lot. I mean, you know, thank goodness I had people that supported me, and uh, that's in my life. Then we came along, and as the mills got bigger and better, came the railroads. So now you can have teams from one state to another. But if you were just think that from 96 all the way to Newry, all the way to teams in North Carolina, this was the most entertainment that these people had was get out of that mill on Saturday and go to the ballpark. The cotton mills were good in that respect. I won't give them credit for some of the hours they worked and some of the young people that they worked. But they did provide entertainment for the people that worked there. So I just want to tell you that if you have anybody that played textile league ball, give them an attaboy. If you have somebody that just, just loves sports and supported that league, give them an attaboy. And I'll go back and tell you one more thing. I thought I loved baseball, and I don't know what led me to it. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Then along came girls. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>